from the Travel with Ivan channel and today I'm just going to share my experience of you traveling to the U.S. from Canada. So I was going down to Tampa, Florida for work on Monday and I flew back on Thursday last week in the second week of May. Uh, so I was flying Delta and connecting to Detroit then down to Tampa, Florida. Um, so this is in Terminal 3 through the U.S. Transporter Gate at Pearson International Airport in Toronto. All right, what's up everybody? It is, whoa, let me turn the lights back on. It is Monday, uh, my first time flying since the whole pandemic started, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, I got my mask because in Canada, um, all the airports require you to wear a mask before you enter, and then on Delta, they require you to wear a mask as well, so. Okay. We are ready to go. So I parked right by the entrance on their daily parking lot. All their other parking lots were closed. And it was pretty much the same price as the economy lots. So it was like 30% off. Um, so ticketing, there was no lineup. Security, there was no lineup. The Nexus line for security was closed. So you can only go through the regular line uh, for global entry. It was open, but there's no line anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And you just funnel in to the same custom agent afterwards. Uh, surprisingly, they didn't ask me a lot of questions. They're just asking me where I was going and what I was doing, which is work. And they didn't seem to be concerned about it, um, which is different than the other way going back into Canada, where they're really strict on the whole non-essential travel part. Once you got past security and custom on the air side, most of the area was blocked off and closed off. They only had two gates open in Terminal, terminal 3 U.S. Transporter, uh, A7 and A8, which was one for American Airlines and one for Delta. Um, and then in terms of stores, they had one convenience store open and then the duty-free, duty-free, it's not really duty-free, uh, was open. Uh, so the good thing was that it wasn't a lot of people walking around and the flight was sort of full. Um, they blocked off the middle seats or the aisle seat if it's a two-seater. And then in first class, they also blocked off the aisle seat. Um, I wasn't sure they were gonna do that at first, even though on the seat map, they were showing that it was blocked off because I was reading like on United, there were some flights where there was oversold and they couldn't block the middle seats. So we, the flight left on time. Uh, when you board, they give you a hand sanitizer wipe and then they give you a bag as well, which has a bottle of water and two snacks, and also a single use hand sanitizer. Um, flight was pretty quick, 40 minutes to Detroit. Once they boarded from the back of the plane, um, so that you would have less contact with other people. Um, but if you're diamond or first class, you can always board whenever you like. Uh, I was sitting up front, uh, but I decided to board last. There's like more than enough room for my luggage, so I wasn't in a hurry to get on board. And they weren't serving any pre-departure drinks anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, in De Detroit, they kind of condensed it basically only to the A gates, but it looked like pretty busy. I mean, it wasn't crowded Monday busy, but there were a lot of people walking around. Uh, some people were wearing hazmat suits, some people had goggles on uh, and face masks. I just wore a face mask. Um, whatever you're comfortable with, right? No one's going to judge you. Uh, they only had the Sky Club at A38 open. There were about 20 people inside when I got there. And in terms of food, there were very limited breakfast items. They were all prepackaged with a, a ba a everything bagel, um, which was in saran wrap. And they had a muffin. And they had a coffee station as well. And then they had a bar in the back where they put up like a temporary table and someone was going to serve you instead of the self-serve bar, which they used to have. So I stayed there for about an hour. It was nice and quiet before my flight down to Tampa. Uh, Tampa, the Tampa flight was on an A319, and that was full with the seats blocked off again. Good job, Delta, on doing that. Uh, with a mixed group of people, from families to non-rads to just crews flying or people just going down there for work. It looked like a pretty regular flight. Uh, minus everyone wearing masks and having the snacks given differently. Uh, the snacks here were 
the two snacks I got here were a bit different than the ones on the first flight. I guess it's whatever they have in the inventory. Um, I was lucky enough to get the entire road to myself by the emergency exit, so flight was pretty nice. Uh, once we got down there, uh, we had to take a terminal train back to the main part of Tampa. And they only had one train running, so it got pretty full, and I was glad I had my mask then. And then from the train, I took another train to the rental car center, and that was not very full at all. Um, at the National Car Rental Center, it was like any other day flying in there. It didn't seem that different. They just had less cars than usual, but it seemed like their operation was very normal. So the first couple of nights, I stayed at the Home to Suites by Hilton. Okay, this is a One King bedroom suite. It has a full fridge and a dishwasher and a microwave. No stove or anything, but yeah, it's a very nice bathroom and a walk-in shower. A little desk you can pull out, uh, drawers. Um, if you want to divide the room, it's a curtain. Nothing like their home to suite signature stuff. If you don't like the curtains, I recommend going to a home with suite. Their fitness center was closed and the pool was closed as well. However, they were serving breakfast. It wasn't a hot breakfast. It was like the to-go bag breakfast that they always used to have. And inside was a granola bar, an apple, a bottle of water, and a muffin. They were all pre-packaged. The other hotel that I stayed at was the Marriott in Tampa West Shore, which is about a five minute drive from the airport. Um, they look like they're recently renovated and had all the new furnitures, uh, but all their facilities were closed. The restaurant was closed, their fitness center was closed. Um, they allow you to go out to the pool if you want, but there's no one there. Um, yeah. Luckily, there was an IHOP close by, so I was able to find breakfast while I was staying at the Marriott. Also inside the room, uh, they took out most of the items like towels, soap, and shampoo, and then they have someone bring it in a basket after you check in and they just leave it outside for you. Overall, it was a nice day. I was expecting most of the stuff to be closed. So they didn't give me a cup that I could use to brush my teeth, and I'm too lazy to ask for one this morning, so I'm just going to brush my teeth with Fiji water. How pretentious, right? Um, in terms of Tampa itself, most of the restaurants are open. They have the 25% capacity rule going and you can get takeout as well or delivery, which is similar to what here in Toronto, except it was not, there's no dining available. So yeah, it was, it was fine. I didn't have trouble finding food. I usually just pick it up and bring it back to the hotel. I went to P.F. Chang and went to Mission Barbecue. Uh, it was great. On the flight back, I was sitting up front and they also gave me a snack box in addition to the regular stuff that I usually get, which is usually what they sell in their onboard menu. I didn't take a video of the content inside the snack box, but I'll post the picture from the menu here. Overall, the flight was pretty good. Uh, I was lucky enough from the Detroit to Toronto flight to have the whole cabin by myself. Overall, I during the pandemic, I actually kind of enjoyed the flights. I mean. The food wasn't as good as usual, but then you have so much space and everything just goes with the flow, right? There's no, there's not tons of people, so you always check in on time, you're always boarding on time, the flight can leave early, and everything just went really smoothly. Uh, on the way back into Canada, I had to download the Arrive Can app on my phone and fill out all the health information because we're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. So I filled that out and at the very last step you're supposed to enter a token number. So once I got to the custom agent, I, they give you a token number so then they can submit all the health information about where you're staying, um, if, you're feel, if you're feeling any like sickness or any have any symptoms. Oh also, at the custom area they had the new Nexus machine where you can just tap your card but for some reason my card didn't work. I think they're still playing around with it. It just looks like the new Passport machine, but there's a Nexus button on there now. And then as you're leaving the terminal, there's someone handing you your form telling you 
um, that you have to quarantine and you can't do this or that. Um, and I also got an email, but three days later it's saying, oh, we might call you. Here's the number that we'll be calling you from. So if you hear it, see it, just pick it up. And that's it. So now I'm just doing my 14 days quarantine. I had bought a bunch of food before I left, so I was ready as well. But my parents also came by before I got here and they left a bunch of fresh food because I had like bread and fruit. So that'll last me for two weeks. And then my freezer is just all stocked up with food. So I'm ready to go. So overall, um, I think it wasn't as terrible, I mean. I mean, obviously, uh, if you don't have to fly, stay home. And um, I, But I hope this is informative. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave below. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button and feel free to subscribe. Um, so thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.